I hate talking about these movies. Hopefully after this video, we'll just all be on the same page. I don't watch these movies and we'll stop talking about them on this channel and you'll know what to expect at that point. Oh my God. So today we're gonna be doing a video all about movies I'm too scared to watch. So no reviews here in this video. It's a list of movies that I've never seen and never will. So I received a comment on my most disturbing movies I've ever seen video. So go check out that video if you wanna know the most disturbing movies I've ever seen, some of which I very much regret ever watching. So in my opinion, I had some pretty hard hitters in that video, right? And I received this comment uh, after I had actually prepared this video. And if you follow me on Twitter, you would have already seen this comment because I kind of you know, addressed it on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, go do that. And follow me on Instagram as well while you're at it. I wanted to touch on it though in this video because it kind of emphasizes the point that I'm trying to make with this video. So we're gonna do a little rant in the beginning before we get into the actual movies uh, that I will never watch. Go back to Disney, little girl. Horror is not for you. I have seen your recommendations and your favorites and your taste is very vanilla and generally lame. Saying the 90s was the best era of horror pretty much says it all. You know nothing. First of all, the 2000s is the best era of horror, okay? Don't get it twisted. I never once said the 90s was the best era of horror, and that's probably the most offensive thing that you put in that comment. But in all seriousness, there's a lot to unpack in this comment. The phrase, horror is not for you. Why? Because I don't like extreme horror? Don't get that. My taste is vanilla. Why? Because I don't recommend really obscure horror movies from the 1960s. I know I shouldn't call attention when I get comments like this because it's obviously ridiculous. Um, I also want to call attention to the fact that he said little girl, which kind of makes this about my gender. And I feel like uh, gatekeeping in the horror community is a huge issue in and of itself, but especially for women in the horror community. It's a nightmare. And I want to make this very clear before we get into the video that you can only love mainstream horror and still be considered a horror fan. You can hate many aspects of the horror genre and still be a horror fan. You could be highly sensitive like me and still be a horror fan. You can have anxiety and still be a horror fan. Also, most importantly, you could be a woman and still be a horror fan. I feel like some people have an issue with that last one. So you can call me a baby, call me sensitive, whatever you want. Uh, there are just certain movies that I will not subject myself to. Why? Because I don't have to. I don't have to watch these movies. I think there's an assumption that if you're a horror fan, you have to love every aspect of horror or you have to have seen a certain list of horror movies in order to consider yourself a horror fan. And I think it should be normalized that we talk about the fact that many of us have lines that are very uncomfortable to cross in the horror genre. There is a reason horror is uncomfortable, but there are certain things that we're allowed to dislike and not watch because it makes us more uncomfortable than what we want from the horror genre. Because I get that comment a lot too when I do videos like this where I talk about not enjoying certain parts of horror. Horror is supposed to make you uncomfortable, yes. You're supposed to enjoy the uncomfortability though, right? And there are certain things that are very prominent in the horror genre that some people are very sensitive to. Like myself, in this video, you'll see a common theme throughout this video of every single movie, what every single movie in this list has in common. So just because every other horror fan has seen these movies, doesn't mean I have to. I used to subject myself to movies like this, uh, hence Megan is Missing, Serbian Film, uh, Human Centipede 2, those are some of the worst that I've seen. And then as I got older, I just realized that's not necessary. I don't have to do that for anyone. I don't have to watch these movies to prove that I enjoy horror or whatever. I don't have to review these movies for you. You could find other reviews on them. So finally, let's get into the list of movies that I am too afraid to watch or just don't want to subject myself to because of the content in them. If you're looking for some more horror explo exploitation movies that you haven't seen yet, maybe this list is also for you. If you want to watch these movies, these are some extreme horror movies, some of them very famous, so. Antichrist from 2009. This movie follows, oh, by the way, there's no trailers. I'm not gonna put any trailers in this. I'm, I'm just, I don't enjoy these movies talk, talking about them. I don't wanna look at them. I don't wanna look at the trailers, so. Forgive me, you get movie posters, that's about it. So this follows a couple who loses their son and the husband decides that it's a good idea for them to go to a cabin in the woods to get away and kind of repair their marriage. And of course, things take a dark turn. I cannot even finish describing what happens in this movie because I'll get demonetized and that's gonna be the case for a lot of these movies. So if you really wanna know what these movies are about, 
you have to read about it online. So this is part of Lars von Trier's Depression Trilogy, which Melancholia is of course a part of that, which you know is one of my favorite movies of all time. So how is it that I can love Melancholia so much and not ever be interested in watching another one of his movies? Uh, Nymphomaniac is also in the Depression Trilogy and I wish that I could do it. I wish that I could do it. I wish that I could finish his Depression Trilogy and this is one of the movies on this list that is a maybe in the future. I just really have to prepare myself for a movie like this. I'm really drawn to the cast of Antichrist. It has Willem Dafoe in it and of course the lead from uh, Mel well not Kristen Dunst but the other lead in Melancholia is in this. She's actually the lead in all of the Depression Trilogy movies. Charlotte Gainsbourg, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, so they're amazing actors in this and I love the concept kind of. <laughs> it gets weird, obviously, obviously, but I just don't think I can bring myself to watch Antichrist anytime soon. Next up is The Girl Next Door. No, not this one. Uh, this follows the torture and torment of a teen girl by her aunt who then gets the neighborhood boys to participate in. This is actually, there's more than that as to why I won't watch it. This is actually based on a true story from 1965, which makes it all that much more horrifying and something that I just don't want to see and put myself through. And this movie is actually based on a book by Jack Ketchum who wrote about this story from the perspective of a neighbor because the details of the story, of the real story, were too graphic for him to write about from like first person or whatever. So it's from the perspective of a neighbor. So that just goes to show how morbid this case was and this movie, I imagine. Obviously I haven't seen it, but from the description, not really my thing. Next one will be a controversial choice and I think probably one of the more tame ones on this list, maybe. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know, but it's just what I've heard about. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust from 1980. This is an Italian movie that is semi-found footage and follows a professor who finds the documentary footage from a crew that was shooting in the Amazon rainforest. Obviously filmed with uh, a tribe portrayed to be cannibals in the movie. Uh, obviously it is a cannibalism movie. Uh, that's not really why it bothers me. I've seen uh, Green Inferno, love that movie. So it's not really that. It's just so much more than that. And personally, I don't care that this is said to be a classic shock style movie. I feel like everyone who likes horror is expected to kind of watch this movie. And I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do that. If this is something that will bother you, don't do it. There was actually a controversy after the movie was released because the director had told some of the actors to go into hiding for up to a year after the movie was released. So people would kind of think it was real, you know, Blair Witch style. Obviously this came before Blair Witch, but you know, that kind of thing to keep up appearances of the horror of this movie. But the director was actually charged with murder because of this footage, they thought it was real. Obviously, once the actors came into the courtroom uh, very much alive, uh, the charges were dropped. That's just a fun fact, that's not a reason why. I don't even think that this movie is that graphic um, from what I've heard from people who've seen clips in the movie itself. So I'm just throwing that out there, I don't know. So my biggest issue with this movie is not even the, I mean, there is sexual violence in it and cannibalism, you know, it's a graphic movie said to be the most controversial of all time, but I think it's for this reason. And it's the real animal cruelty that happens within it. They actually killed seven animals in reality. Like they really killed seven animals for the sake of this movie. And the director did say later that he regretted filming it in this way. And there were scenes that really disturbed the actors. And I have a feeling that they kind of regret doing it this way as well. There's a scene where they have to kill, I think a pig, um, and the actor just butchered his monologue afterwards, but they had to keep that in the movie because they only had one pig. So there's that. They apparently, all the animals were given to the tribe that they were filming with uh, for food afterwards, but I just personally cannot watch a movie if I know for a fact that the animals really died. I know they were given for food. At least they, were, they served a purpose in some other way besides filming a stupid movie. Sorry if this is your favorite movie. <laughs> I just called it stupid, but I just don't believe in killing animals for the sake of entertainment or a movie. So I'm very sensitive to that 
not a fan. Simulated animal death, I can get over. That happens a lot in horror movies, as we know. That's fine. Uh, I'm okay with that, but real animal death? No, thank you. I really hope I stayed monetized on this video. I should have had a sponsor or something just in case. Next up, famous one you probably are expecting to be on this list, Salo, 100 Days of Sodom from 1975. This movie follows four wealthy Italians that kidnap 18 teenagers and subject them to lots of different types of torture, psychological, sexual. I think you're getting the theme that's consistent in all of these movies. So this movie does take place around World War II and is said to have different themes than just being a graphic shock movie. Apparently there's political and socio-historical themes throughout it, so historians and critics kind of debate if this movie is can be seen as like an art piece or a history, a historical type piece, or if it's just depraved. This movie was actually released three weeks prior to the director's murder, which I find very interesting. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm guessing it's not related to the movie, but I'm not sure on the reasoning or why he was even murdered. Salo, of course, remains banned in many, many countries, and to this day stays one of the most controversial movies of all time. And I just can't do it. I'm not, I, none of that sounds fun to me. Like it, none of it. <laughs> oh, this next one, I have a feeling everyone's gonna agree with me on this one. No one's gonna look at this and be like, ah, oh, you're missing out though. Necromantic from 1987. I mean, the name alone probably gives away why I will not be watching this. Uh, this follows a man who brings home a corpse uh, for his, him and his wife to enjoy and uh, some jealousy develops because the wife prefers the corpse. <laughs> so this is actually a German exploitation movie that of course banned in many many countries but still for some reason remains a cult classic. It has like a cult following for it apparently, I don't know. This movie's considered a no budget type movie with very minimal and cheap special effects, although they did use real animal intestines and eyes for some of the scenes. So this was literally made as a shock movie. The director had said that this was to rebel against the German rating system and to shock as many people as possible. So not sure how you can debate that it's like artistic or whatever. It's no budget made for shock. That's it. So it's a no thank you from me. <laughs> Next up we have August Underground Mortem from 2003. This was a direct-to-video exploitation film. I think it's safe to say that all the movies on this list are exploitation films, my least favorite genre of all time. Now I will say I will be avoiding pretty much all of the August, Un I think there's a trilogy of the August Underground movies, I think. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna watch any of them, but specifically Mortem, I feel like, is said to be the most disturbing, so that's the one I'm putting on this list, I guess. <laughs> so this movie follows two friends and a newbie that they brought along on a killing spree. More than just killing going on. Okay, lots of violence, different types of it. And this movie is filmed in a way to pass as a faux snuff film, actually, so they made it as realistic as possible. Personally, I love that the only trivia on IMDb about this movie is that it's Snoop Dogg's least favorite movie. Like, why? Why is, why is that a trivia? <laughs> Next up, we have Irreversible from 2002. This is a French psychological movie done by Gaspar No. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's also known for A24's Climax, a movie I did not enjoy. So maybe I'm just not a fan of his movies. That's fine. It seems like his movies are done very artistically, kind of like fever dreamy, which I can appreciate as an artistic choice. It's not for me, but I can at least appreciate his work after seeing Climax. I get it and I understand why people like it. Uh, it's just not my favorite and that's totally fine. I think this one in particular, Irreversible, uh, seems extremely graphic and gratuitously violent just from reading about it. Some artistic choices were made in this, which again, I can appreciate being different. And in this movie, there is a low frequency throughout the first 30 minutes, which actually causes nausea and vertigo in viewers. And he did this on purpose, so he would get that reaction from people, and many people walked out. I think three people passed out uh, when watching this movie, so I don't want that uh, feeling personally, but I understand the choice of it. He's trying to make it shocking and get a reaction out of people, and if putting a low frequency in there does that for you, sure, 
do it. I'm fine. <laughs> People who like that kind of stuff are gonna be really into it. This is famously known for a few scenes, one being a 10 minute long um, sexual violence scene, no thank you, uh, homophobia and head trauma, like extreme head trauma, which Ari Aster seems to be the king of, but maybe Gaspar Noe's coming up with that too. I don't, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but <laughs> I can handle uh, some head trauma here and there, but you know, like in Ari Aster's movies, I'm a fan. Uh, this just seemed like not my thing. Okay, the next one, I'm not even gonna pronounce correctly. So if you're German, you might wanna cover your ears for a second. Melancholy der Engel. I did take some uh, German lessons on Duolingo, Duolingo, but I switched to Spanish later on because, I mean, I love German, the language, don't get me wrong. I just, I cannot pronounce anything to save my life. <laughs> in English translation, that translates to The Angel's Melancholia. So this movie came out in 2009 and is a German experimental type movie. This one kind of confused me when I was reading about it. I wasn't really sure what it was really about. It just sounds very bizarre and very graphic and just from reading about it online, I know that I'm going to avoid it. It's just not my kind of movie. It was seen to be an exploitative hardcore film with repetitive and meaningless depravity. So if you personally have any other movies that you know are similar to the ones on this list, please let me know down below so I know to avoid them. Or anything that has similar content to these movies that is my line, um, let me know. Sometimes it's, I, I can't even go into it. I'm not gonna go into that right now. <laughs> it's not all um, certain types of violence in movies that I can't do. It's just some movies are gratuitous and take it way, way too far in my opinion. And it makes me uncomfortable in a way that's not fun and not entertaining me at that point. It's just disturbing me to a point where I'm uncomfortable and I don't, I don't like thinking about it or seeing that. It's just, I don't want to see that. So yeah, I think you get at this point why uh, I'm not going to be watching these movies. But if you like them, good for you. A lot of people do. A lot of people love these movies and love exploitation movies and these types of shock movies. Not, not me. <laughs> and that's okay, you know, we can all like different things from the genre and different, you know, we're, we all like different genres anyway. I used to do a react series back in the day where I would watch disturbing movies. Serbian film was one of them. I watched that with my boyfriend and have regretted that ever since. Okay, my camera cut me off from rambling, so it's probably time I just wrap up this video. I'm sorry if you enjoy these movies and I'm talking down on them. It's just, I, I know they're not for me and you have movies that aren't for you and that's totally fine. That's what makes this genre so beautiful is that we all like different things and there's something for everyone, like literally something for everyone in the horror genre and these ones are just not for me. Let me know your thoughts on this video on any of these movies if you wanna share your opinions on these movies and whether you like them or not for people who might want to watch them. You can leave your own mini reviews for them down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.